and welcome to Focus Africa. And today we focus on a critical public health issue that has been making uh, the rounds and headlines across Africa. The Mpox virus, once confined to remote villages in South, uh, Central and West Africa, has become a growing concern, prompting the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to declare it a public health emergency of continental security. So as Nigeria prepares to commence vaccination against Mpox on October 8, 2024, with the deployment of the Genos vi uh, vaccine uh, donated by the United States, there are growing concerns within the medical community about the adequacy and safety of this uh, vaccination strategy. Joining us today to discuss these concerns is Dr. Philip Njamande, Chairman of the International Institute of Advanced Research and Training at Chidikon Medical Center. Dr. Njamande has raised significant questions about the vaccine's deployment, especially in light of the limited doses available and the ongoing regulatory procedures. Dr. Njamande, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Now, to start with, sir, can you explain why the Mpox virus has become such a significant public health concern, especially here in Nigeria? Yeah, um, we have known uh, Mpox for uh, some time, um, which uh, way back in the 70s, we had uh, a few outbreaks. Um, but uh, since then, it has remained uh, very much confined uh, to specific areas and uh, only isolated cases have gone forward. Um, yes, there is an outbreak uh, which started in Central Africa and then, of course, Congo area. And now uh, some observations have been made uh, even in Europe and America. Uh, this, uh, this is solely a, a sexually transmitted disease. Um, its clinical severity is very um, mild, I would say, compared to uh, the, the usual infectious diseases. You, you actually have um, rashes, and you have pain, and you have fever. Uh, basically, these are general symptoms. And it's a self-limiting disease. That means uh, between two to four weeks, uh, most of these patients will recover even without any medication. It's not supportive therapy. However, one now asks why it is necessary to deploy vaccines. Uh, because this is a self-limiting disease. Uh, it's not, though it's a pox virus, but uh, it's not anything close to smallpox. The vaccines you have are not specific vaccines. These are vaccines meant for smallpox. So the, the Mpox doesn't have a specific vaccine. And this, this, this is what is uh, causing a lot of... Uh, the, uh, the, the, the concerns that this is not a specific vaccine. If we have a non-specific vaccine, we are not so sure that the side effects of using this vaccine uh, might uh, create even a more severe condition than Doctor. even the disease could have uh, resulted to. Doctor. And vaccines, I must warn, they are, they are just, must be used specifically. They are used to confine the disease from, uh, you know, in a specific place. So, and protect those who are around that place of disease. It's not a magic bullet. It's not something you have to deploy to vaccinate everybody. Uh, that, uh, just something like the blunder that was committed with uh, uh, COVID vaccine and uh, all the other Ebola and all the other ones that they try to do. So, we have to be careful. And there's another issue that arises with this is that by raising so much the profile of this disease, which by mortality are totally unimportant for medicine. You know, when, when something kills people in, in hundreds, though we are concerned, but we are not really so concerned as things that kill people in millions. So we still have the big elephants in the room, like malaria, typhoid, uh, uh, hypertension, strokes. We, these are diseases that, that affect mass number of people. The uh, intestinal parasites doctor, affect last month Dr. Of people. Yes. Now, the vaccine that uh, Nigeria has received, especially the Genos vaccine that they have received from the U.S., it has been approved uh, by the FDA for the preventation or the prevention of Mpox and is now going to be rolled out at, uh, uh, on October 8th this year. 
Um, your, what, do you, what do you make of this particular vaccine? Uh, it is indeed for the prevention of, of MPOX then. Well, uh, uh, first and foremost, um, we have not had the clinical trials of this vaccine in our environment. But it's been approved, um, approved by the of, FDA. Yeah, even if it's approved by FDA, many things approved by FDA, we still have to do the clinical trials here uh, because our conditions are peculiar. So um, I, don't, I don't think that we must, uh, because the FDA approved it and because it was given to Nigeria free, we just deployed them. This do is we, not how medicine works. Do we have the facilities for a clinical trial uh, for a nation as large as ours, as diverse as we are, and with the number of, uh, with our population, do we have the facility for a clinical trial? Do we have the time, the luxury of time for a cl clinical trial, given the number of, of cases uh, reported in, uh, in these five states? Dr. Njumanzi. Doctor, you there? We have the doctor with us. Yeah, we do have the facility for clinical trials. We do. We do have the facility. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, we do have the facility for clinical trials here in Nigeria. We do. Uh, it can be deployed in our hospitals uh, for this clinical trial. You deploy prematurely the uh, side effects. You have not done any good, even though the intention could have been to do good, but the result will be that you didn't do the uh, due diligence that is required. So it's not an excuse uh, that uh, 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 the whole the whole uh, country is going to be in danger if we do not uh, start the vaccination now. And I don't think it's valid based on the evidence of what is happening right now in the states. Uh, doctor, you spoke of targeted deployment. However, the Nigerian government might not be employing this strategy. What's the worst case scenario that could happen in a case where we haven't gotten clinical trial and this is deployed uh, generally into the public? However, they have spoken about how they might be doing this. They are sectioning out health workers and people who are in proximity to people who might have had the disease. But what's the worst case scenario? Yeah, the worst case scenario is, is that you have... Uh, vaccine-related uh, uh, injuries. And, and uh, there, there might be, and mind you that most times uh, uh, with this vaccine, you really do have um, kind of live vaccines. That means if you have a live uh, uh, smallpox vaccine, like the Acam 2000, for example, if, if, if you have a live uh, smallpox vaccine, you could actually uh, activate the, the spread of smallpox that has already been el eliminated in the country. So the, the, the truth of the matter is that you really uh, don't have the basis to just deploy this to everybody in the country. Yes, you can do a targeted release in those areas where there is an outbreak. Let's say, for example, you are observing or Jota somewhere in Lagos that there is an outbreak and the health workers there, and those people who are in contact, immediate contact, and you do the vaccination there. Yes, in a limited, focused way, that might be useful. But uh, to go vaccinating everybody for this uh, is essentially a sexually transmitted disease. It's not really, doesn't have any medical foundation to it. Hmm. Now, given the limited supply that uh, we're going to be receiving, which is the, now, the government have now said, will be distributed across the five states. Do you believe that uh, this approach is, if, will be effective in curbing the spread of MPOX, or does it raise more challenges uh, just for it to be distributed in these five states? Yeah, in these five states, that would make sense uh, in those focused areas. And it will make sense not just in the five states, but uh, targeted around those areas and communities where the outbreak has been observed. Um, uh, the people who I think uh, will be the best focus group will be the, tr the road transport workers. Let's say uh, if we observe that the road transport workers from one locality to the other, they are the people who can pass on the infection very easily. So if the road transport workers uh, are somehow vaccinated, who, who apply within that access uh, uh, so we can actually protect uh, others, you know, and then 
the spread of this can be curtailed in a very targeted way, but it's not justified for mass deployment among the population. It, it, it makes no sense. Well, Doctor, um, finally, and if you can summarize, what steps do uh, Nigeria and other African countries that have experienced the MPOX, what steps must they take to ensure a balance between urgency and strategy? I think the best strategy of looking at this is these diseases are endemic diseases. That means uh, we cannot wish them away. Um, the, the hype that is attached to these diseases are not doing anything good for our health systems because they misdirect the personnel, they misdirect the resources from what is actually going to kill people in millions, like malaria, uh, uh, typhoid, or, or hypertension, and we direct it to a disease that is totally unimportant when it comes to mortality rates. So I think the thing is that the, the, the true thing is surveillance, surveillance, surveillance. So if we do the due surveillance, isolate these people who are infected and those communities and do just a targeted vaccination of those in the, in this, in the immediate vicinity, we will be very successful. And not to misdirect all the resources and personnel to a disease that is totally unimportant when it comes to mortality rates. Well, Doctor, we want to say thank you so much for taking out the time and joining us today to have this conversation. Dr. Philip Njemanzi, uh, he joined us to, to just to talk about some very you know, key points and pertinent issues raised about the vaccination, uh, introduction of vaccination to curb the spread uh, and also to prevent uh, monkeypox. Doctor, once again, many thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Okay.